to Doctor Who The Community Show, Episode 6. Ooh, we've got a good one for you today. Don't know why I'm doing the voice. We have an interview with Andy Dobson and his son Rory, who was a bit shy for most of the interview, but he's there. Here we go. Say surprise! Surprise! Yay! Yay! He even made me a spot of tea. Very British. And also, you may be noticing what I'm wearing. Look at that, yeah. Speaking of the store, last episode I mentioned the possibility of me working with artists to do limited edition runs. It's starting this episode. Good friend of myself and the show, Bo, has created this design. Based on the uh, melon cutting gag <laughs> from a couple episodes ago that people loved. First of all, love Daleks. Second of all, love melon. Combine them. It's brilliant. This design will only be available for two weeks. So from the premiere of this episode to the premiere of next episode. So if you want to support Bo the artist or myself and the show, getting one of those will be the best way to do it. And I mean, why wouldn't you want one of these? It's great. Fan films! I'm so orange. Why am I so orange? Should we do this? Now I'm blue. Let's do the fan films in a blue light. Why not? The first thing I'm going to mention is The Asylum, which I do believe is a trilogy of... Hmm, how do I describe The Asylum? This is a comedy series ranging from action figures to audio, and it's very strange. I believe the first episode came out in Dalek December, when they were celebrating the uh, 50 years of the Daleks. And from there, it's... Well, I I'm just going to show you a clip. This is the former Dalek Supreme. He is irreparably corrupted. He can only speak in incomprehensible gibberish. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Dalek Supreme. You will remain silent. Strange. I know. It was the lovely Rory Stock who got in contact with me about uh, sharing this out because both him and the creator of the Asylum, Mataf Productions, is working on revamping it. I have been allowed an exclusive clip of the animated version. Take a look. Nous devons trouver le docteur. Immédiatement. Il doit être exterminé. I do not understand what you are saying. What an e one like some t t t t t t t tea. Nobody requires tea. Return to your designated section of the asylum. Definitely check out Rory and Mataf Productions uh, to see any updates on this project because it's looking pretty funny. <laughs> Up next is now friend of the show, Doctor Who 2012 has released their Series 5 update video. The comments alone from that video shows that it's just great to see that they're still working on stuff. I mean, obviously I knew that, I interviewed them, but anyway. If you want to see where they're up to and the amazing 4K footage they've been getting with the new camera, go and check out their update video. Link below. We want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has been supporting us and has been patiently waiting for the series to come out. It will be worth the wait, I assure you. We want to make it the best that it can be. Next is a unique one. I don't think I've quite seen a project like this one. Avenue Who. Now, if you're a theatre buff, you may recognise uh, that title as a pun on Avenue Q, a very raunchy puppet show. And if you take Avenue Q, you sort of subtract the raunchiness and make it family friendly. You add Doctor Who. That's the one. The creator has given me a little clip to show, so have a look. And this, this is me happy face. <laughs> this is me confused face. This is me sad face. <laughs> oh, oh, no, but you must. Thank you. Oh, oh, you're just just the oh, you're hardly alone. We're all here. Carry on, Doctor. Oh. Most rappers only have two arms instead of three. Three arms? Yeah. A left arm, a right arm, and a pew 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 fire arm. If there is a show local to me, I will be going to see this because, well, I, I don't know. I, I just love the idea of Doctor Who live. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, 
go and give them a follow. Finally, the creator of Black Glove Studios got in contact with me about a project they've been working on for a couple of years. The process unfortunately got put on hold due to COVID, but it's starting to pick up steam again. It is very close to the creator's heart, so instead of me talking about it, why don't I let him do it? I'm Chris McKeon, and I want to bring the Brigadier back to the wedding of Sarah Jane Smith. Some of you know that uh, my audio group, Black Love Studio, makes uh, Doctor Who and Sarah Jane Adventures fan audios. Well, we are, in the near future, bringing our best treat yet to Doctor Who fandom. Not an audio adventure, but a, a video television adventure. Nicholas Courtney was meant to appear in the Sarah Jane Adventures Series 3 episode, The Wedding of Sarah Jane Smith, where he would have met David Tennant's 10th Doctor. Sadly, Nicholas Courtney had a stroke before he could film that episode, and so his role was removed from the final uh, television adventure. I, as a massive Brigadier fan, was heartbroken, as many uh, fans of Nicholas Courtney and the Brigadier were, and of course, followed by the shocking and sad death of Elizabeth Sladen, just shortly after that. Since that time, since uh, the passing of Nicholas Courtney, I have wanted to do something to put things right, and for several years I thought of maybe rewriting the story as a, as a novella with the Brigadier meeting the Doctor and maybe at times I was thinking of making, making this an, an animation project. But in the last couple of years with the advent of deepfake technology and breakthroughs in, in uh, film VFX, I decided to go all the way and, and take a big risk and deliver to fandom filmed, the filmed return of the Brigadier where he would meet the Doctor on screen. I assembled a professional film crew. We filmed the Brigadier scenes for the wedding of Sarah Jane Smith. And it was a joy to film. We filmed uh, on November 21st, 2nd and 3rd of 2019. And over that three day period, I felt as if I was on a Doctor Who set. It was a wonderful experience to do. And there will be more to come information, but the joy of seeing people in costume as the Doctor and the Brigadier was something I will never forget. The moment where they met. And this story that we want to bring now to, to fans is, will be very special because we will get to see the Brigadier meet the Doctor and we will get to see them have one last adventure together on screen and we will get to see them say goodbye. Right now, the pre-production and the production of this, uh, of this film, these scenes which um, we've made, are complete, but well, we need help with post-production. That's why I'm coming to you now. Uh, we, after this pandemic that's affected everyone's lives for the last year and a half. We want to bring this story finally to fans and to give them some joy and, uh, and, uh, and something to look forward to during these times as we come out of the pandemic era. We need help now in post-production to find people to, you know, that have skills with video editing, that have skills with green screen editing, that have skills with background composition, that have skills with uh, VFX and with, and with deepfake to bring this um, project to its conclusion. And so we are looking not for money, not for funds, but for people. People that are willing to volunteer and to give some of their time over the next short few months to bring this story to fandom and bring it to light so that we can finally bring the Brigadier back to the wedding of Sarah Jane Smith. So I want to thank Jack for taking the time out of his um, community show to include me in this, in this uh, pitch and this announcement. But when the time is right and when it is complete, you will see on screen the Brigadier and the Tenth Doctor meet one last time. Thank you so much, and let's bring the Brigadier back to the wedding of Sarah Jane Smith and to Doctor Who. In my unit days, we were like a family. To reiterate the main point of this segment, if you have skills in any of these areas, get in contact with Black Glove Studios. He would love your help. From the behind the scenes stuff, this independent project looks incredible. It's one of the most professional things I've seen this fandom do. Please show your support for this project. It is... I think I have fixed the lighting and colour issue. Is this looking better? 
I hope so. Fans of this show will probably recognise the name Katie Haynes. She is the 13th Doctor cosplayer I interviewed a few episodes ago. She is an absolutely wonderful individual and has been doing some voice acting work. Namely, for Matthew Stephen Chambers, and I have two audio productions to show you from him. First of all is Doctor Who Mirror Mirror 1. Monsters of the Sphere. This has a terrific script and an amazing voice cast to boot, including the aforementioned Katie Haynes, and includes Matthew Chambers as his original incarnation of the Doctor. I also love the art, but enough about me rambling about it. You just want to hear a clip, don't ya? Don't ya? I do. Let's listen. Is that him, K9? You know, it's strange. People usually ask me that after they've met one of my other faces. You've not met one of my other faces, have you? No. Well, in that case, whether I am who I am is a universal metaphysical conundrum. This is the Doctor Master, Mistress. Yes, I am. I'm the Doctor. You must be Victoria. No. Well, yes. I'm... I'm sorry. I go by Tori. Also, Matt, how'd you get John Colshaw? Now there's an interview I'd love to do. <laughs> the other Matthew Stephen Chambers production I'd like to mention is slightly different. This one is a storybook. Well, you know, an audio, but you get it. Narrated by Matthew and featuring Katie Haynes again, but this time as the 13th Doctor, it is a wholesome listen. I believe the book was produced by Quirk Books, so, but, you know, this is a fan-made, no-profit thing, so hopefully it's all right. So if you want something to play to your children as they drift off into dreamland, this could be the one for you. What happened to the TARDIS? And who are you? Who are you? I'm the Doctor. Doctor who? Just the Doctor. The Doctor opened the TARDIS door, and Lizzie saw that they were in outer space. Finally, we have TT Productions with a fantastic Eighth Doctor audio. The Eighth Doctor is such a specific and tricky voice to nail down, but oh my god! Ben O'Neill, you're smashing it! And also Abby of Traken plays a terrific Charlie, and just the soundscape of this thing is terrific. Great script, great voice cast, go and give it a look. I'm seriously starting to think you can't even fly this TARDIS. It's definitely not true, see? Space Station 2964. Should I clap? You're beginning to remind me of another companion I once had. She always moaned about her... Not, not getting to hear fro, yes, Doctor, you've told me that one already. Starting to think I need to keep a list. Come on, let's explore. 13 Bannerman Road is where Sarah Jane Smith lives. And it's home to things way beyond your imagination. Like me! Not yet, Luke. There's the implication of a child being skinned alive and sewn together with a gleeful smile and stinking farts into a suit fit for a green blob monster. A genetically engineered gay icon in the attic. Bradley Walsh going through his clown phase. It was certainly an odd job. You suck! Shut up, Luke! You're doing- Cannon fod- I mean- other school children. Well, the humans do make the best cannon fodder. If you learn that from me. <laughs> I think you'll find she learned it from me. Um, excuse both of me. This isn't Doctor Who. Consider yourself lucky you got to appear once, Tenant. I'm here, all right. And a whole CBBC's budget worth of adventure, right here on the doorstep. Ready? Nah! What? I refuse to be your cannon fodder! It's so bright out here, I think like my face is gonna melt. I am keeping the window open regardless of the sound quality this episode because, oh, I love this hoodie, it's very comfy, but this mixed with this, I'm baking! Colin baking. Comedy. <laughs> Isaac Travers sent over his second Doctor cosplay and I love it. I don't think you get a lot of second Doctor cosplays, do you? It's not one I see often. We need more second Doctor cosplayers, goddammit! Don't you agree? Yes! 
Well, that was worth getting pressed. <clears throat> My second doctor needs some work. Moving on to a name I don't know how to say. I believe it is Averia Vitieva. Probably wrong, though. <laughs> this cosplayer cosplays the 11th and 12th Doctors, and oh my god, just looking at the pictures of how great those coats look make my bank account nervous. Also, they are just really good photos. Uh, I assume it's both yourself and your girlfriend being the photographers here, because they are very well composed. Speaking of your girlfriend, though, she is also a cosplayer too, cosplaying Clara Oswald, and the pair of you just look adorable together. Your girlfriend's name is also one I can't say. Mione Meris. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. Your handles will be here anyhow. But yes, you both look incredible in your cosplays, and I'm jealous, and I want to wear it. See, one day in the future, I know, just for a fact, I know how my brain works, that I'm going to interview a cosplayer in person. I don't know who, I don't know when, but... I'm gonna move heaven and earth to make it happen. <laughs> and I know, for a fact, because I know this brain, after the questions are asked, I'm gonna turn to them and I'm gonna say, can we play dress up? Or something to that, ex <laughs> something to that effect. Ah, one day. <laughs> Here we are. We are at the Dobson residence. I've been very kindly invited down uh, by your lovely self. Thank you. I don't know why I've been invited, though. There's nothing Doctor Who here. No, we, 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 they, we kind of play it down in the household, really. There's, there's very few links or references in the house. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. It's n I'm sure a lot of people already know the lovely Dobson family, including... Hello, what's your name? Oh, you bit shy. But this is, of course, the lovely Rory, who's hidden himself away. <laughs> and it's very nice for you to, to let me come and play today. Do you like playing with Colin? <laughs> you, can, you can eat your pan of chocolate. <laughs> well, we can, we'll, we'll come back, little man. It's okay. First question, we were talking about this earlier, but where did the Dalek come from? He was one of those... Um decisions on eBay quite late at night where you go, that sounds like a good idea. I mean, it was ready for our wedding. Uh, we were going to get, uh, <laughs> as, 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 as you do, and we thought there should be something uh, uh, to sort of represent us both. Uh, there. My wife's not necessarily a Doctor Who fan, it's more sort of... Uh, uh, Who is off screen, I should mention. Just yeah, through sort of Stockholm Syndrome, really, that she's kind of uh, uh, gone along with this. But we, we looked and we looked to hire one and we looked at the price of that and we took a deep breath and went, maybe not. And um, we saw one on eBay and we bid for it. And they're in the classroom on the giant screen in the classroom because I, I told the kids that <laughs> this, this bid was coming through at about midday <laughs> and uh, I hadn't got a chance for it. And as it ticked away, I was going, oh, oh, it looks like... And then, of course, it did. And mm. the, the children all found this hilarious. And then we suddenly realised the logistics of getting a Dalek from where it'd been bought back to our house. Where was that? Fortunately, it was only about three miles up the road from oh, us, good. which was more good luck than anything else. So I put out a shout out on Facebook to friends saying, anyone got a, a, a car with a boot roughly the size of a Dalek? Why this Dalek in particular? Why this model? Or was that just sort of luck? Partly it was luck. Partly also, I'm of that generation where I'm an old school fan. The black and silver one as a kid watching it and as a teenager in Sylvester McCoy's era, I absolutely adored it. I'd kind of got a bit, like all teenagers, I kind of got a bit embarrassed by Doctor Who. Being a Doctor Who fan during Colin Baker's second season and Sylvester McCoy's first was tricky. You kind of became yeah. a little bit... You, you played it down at school. You don't play Doctor in Distress in the car. Not, not, no, <laughs> not, not loudly. And then McCoy's Dalek story arrived on screen and yes. all of a sudden kids at school were going do you, you know about Doctor Who, don't you? What's going on in here? And you saw Ace hit in that Dalek, it was yeah, great! That's right, yeah. This one's got a, kind of a, a, a sentimental attachment to it as well, because he's the cool one. We should never have been embarrassed about it in the first place. I've, I've come back to McCoy's first season thanks to that Blu-ray set recently. Oh, of course. And yeah. I absolutely adored it. It's, it's ridiculous and it's fun. Going back to the um, that cool thing, it must have been strange, because uh, not to be rude, I'm a younger fan, but so uh, I grew up with the Revival series, so it must have been strange for it to come back and suddenly be quite cool again and be as big as it was. It was very odd. Kids at school, because I'm a, a primary school teacher, so children at school had always sort of known I was a Doctor Who fan. Um, there'd be a... a, a yes, <laughs> can see a, a seagull is trying to gate crash the interview on top of the it, house. It's one of the drawbacks of filming outside on the coast. Then it came back, and what was lovely with that was watching it through children's eyes. Mm. And I think one of the things that Russell T Davis did so well was to reintroduce the show 
as a new show, setting it in a very recognisable setting for, for kids. It wasn't in Edwardian England or any of those sorts of things that if I'd been bringing it back, that's exactly what I'd have done. I'd have had mm. it, this, this Edwardian adventurer and this sort of strange library or something like that, almost actually like they did with Capaldi's third season. But that's not as relatable for small children. So what I got the next day after Rose had been broadcast the next Monday morning, kids just bursting in school wanting to talk about it. Really? And being terrified of wheelie bins. All of a sudden, mm. my mum remembers this because her birthday's on the 23rd of November. Oh, but, really? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's meant to be. That's right. So it's unfortunate. It's the only way I remember my mum's birthday. Ooh. But you had kids already going around in the playground picking up you know, sink plungers and whisks and things like that and sticking their arms in front of them and saying they're a Dalek. Kids could imitate all of that. Mm, there's, like there's, the stomping of the Cybermen's feet and so on. That's right. They wouldn't necessarily have the fanciest costume, but the movement mm. of it would be there and the ideas would be there. And, and when later on you get someone like Wilf, for example, firing um, a, a paintball, which Rory was watching yesterday because Rory loves Old Jack's Boat which is, if you've not ever seen Old Jack's Boat, and don't look puzzled at me on this, it's got Martha in it, it's got Wilf in it, and it's written by Russell T Davis. In I one, need this. CBBC, on the iPlayer, Old Jack's Boat, watch it, it's brilliant. So when, when I told Rory that Jack was coming today, he got a little bit more excited, and was a little oh. disappointed at your age, and your lack of Bernard Cribbins-ness. Sorry, I'll, I'll try to be Bernard Cribbins next time, I promise. We all try to be Bernard Cribbins. We do. This is a question for you, little Rory, so don't have to wa don't worry about answering. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're hiding, so you can't see this. So, hey Rory, could I ask you a question? Why do you like dressing like the Dalek? Why do you like dressing like the Dalek? Is it super fun? <laughs> He's doing this for reference. He's only a month off being free, so uh, when, when you see the photos of uh, Rory and his outfits, they are on for about 30 seconds at a time. <laughs> I feel like mentioning, and I'm going to be careful with how I say it, it about the true fan incident. Ah, I yeah. feel like I need to bring it up because that's how a lot of people came to sort of know your, your these posts. Now we're a long way away from that whole fiasco. Sort of, what was your initial reaction to it? It was, it was vague amusement, actually. It's the sort of thing that if Twitter had been around when I was a teenager, I fear I would have probably felt the same. I might not have articulated it, but I'd have probably felt the same way. The problem with a show that's been going for close to 60 years now is that for every generation joining the show it means something different to them yeah if you join the show in the early 80s and the, the, the next fan generation after me were where it's proper science fiction and it's not been the same since christopher bitmead and, and the others left <laughs> you know it's it's it, it, it's a farce now and a pantomime etc etc yeah. they, they they're naturally embarrassed by it i thought it was unnecessary to uh, contact me personally but you have to remember that if you work on the thirds principle with Twitter or with anything actually in life, a third of people will quite like what you do. Mm. A third of people will be indifferent and a third of people might actively dislike you for what you're doing. Yep. And so <laughs> if you work on the thirds principle and you get any more than a third liking what you're doing, great. Mm. So when you get something like this, which is criticizing at the time an 18 month two year old for holding a plunger in, oh, I wouldn't mind, but it wasn't even a plunger. It was, uh, it was our toilet brush, which my wife's still not forgiving me for, <laughs> uh, and a whisk. What? did surprise me and what uh, delighted me and baffled me really was that I posted this up at about half seven in the morning in the in, the, oh, in my staff car park when they come under. Um, Hello. before uh, <laughs> before my day's work and uh, I don't I don't I can't go to daddy <laughs> Like You're trying to give him a cuddle? He's yeah. trying to exterminate you. Oh, okay. oh. fair enough. You got me. Oh. You're going to use your sink plunger and whisk on Jack. <gasps> You nearly got me. Oh bless him, he is an, he's adorable. <laughs> yeah, th th there are times where he is a toddler and um, even the Daleks retreat. I, I, I've, I've seen our, our Colin just take a few steps back every so often. <laughs> Going back to the Twitter uh, ridiculousness. I posted this up in the morning just thinking that the five or six people who you know, often comment on these things would go, oh yeah that is a bit silly isn't it? What I didn't expect was when I checked at about five o'clock that afternoon and not only had I got quite a few comments underneath it from Neil Gaiman and Mallory Blackman and all these people that I admire. But I'd got these comments from uh, DMs from the Metro and the Independent. There's a lot of articles about it. There, there, were a, there were a surprising number of articles and what I, what I was really delighted they all focused on was what it was really all about, which is 
the huge and overwhelming positivity of Doctor Who fans. It was absolutely astonishing. And it went on for days afterwards as well. And Mountain Warehouse sent us a pair of wellies and a Hardware Shop in Leeds sent us a sink plunger. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of like that level of sponsorship. It's not, like, it's, not like, it's not like character options sending us all the toys and him having to be forced to open them and go, oh, what a surprise. So I've got a few pictures downloaded because I was scrolling through your Twitter just sort of ahead of the interview. And I'd just love to hear the story behind it, essentially. Okay. First of all, this one caught my eye. Ah, yes, that, that was, he was about a week old at that point. <laughs> that was almost pre-Twitter for us. My mum and Laura's mum were sort of worried, you know, how, how will we cope? Um, I, I ducked out for the first week of Rory's time at home by getting bronchial pneumonia. And, uh, and and really just to get the attention back on me more than anything else. <laughs> so my mum was like, "Oh, you're all coping. Are you all fine?" So I did that photo and went, "Yeah, we've got we've got we've got a spare pair of hands." I was just sent to a relative. So that was sent to that was sent to my mum and to to, to Laura's mum at the time. And um, the response and, was, <laughs> "Oh, kind of a, a, a accepted Colin now." But it was it was it's very part of the family. Part of the family. But <laughs> prior to the wedding, when we were talking about getting Colin to the wedding, and and we're saying he's quite big. He's bigger than we thought he was. And my father-in-law hadn't quite tweaked that we were talking about the Dalek. So he was going, oh, Colin's quite, quite, quite a large gentleman, and clearly, I don't think I've met him. Can't then say that, that's so rude. Then, then we started talking... Fuck your ears, Colin. Then we started talking about sort of the need for disabled access to get him up the ramps and stuff like that. Oh, and we're yeah. going, oh, OK, so he's, he's, he's... Yeah, OK, so he's picturing this, this, this enormous man. When we said we were then hire, hiring a lorry to get him in, in the back of, to bring him um, to the wedding... And at no point beforehand did you mention it was a Dalek? No, no, <laughs> that, that, that then featured quite heavily in uh, my, my father-in-law's uh, wedding speech. On the same topic... Oh, did I not save it in the end. I was going to save the one of <laughs> of the dance, of uh, you dancing with the Dalek. How'd that go? <laughs> uh, well, it was terrifying at first because I genuinely thought that my friends had wheeled the Dalek onto the uh, dance floor and that Andy would be really angry about it. But as it was, it turned out he was inside and I thought, well, why not just go with it? It was great. <laughs> it was my wedding. Why not? My gem. I love her to pieces. She loves me. I've got her into the show, much like uh, the pair of you have, but... All right, but <laughs> I've said to her, so um, can we, can we, for the wedding, just, you know, in the future? And she's just like, nah. Drop us a line on the date <laughs> and the venue and we'll just wheel him past. Jen, plug your ears. <laughs> I'm making plans. This one I'd love to mention. That was, that was brilliant, that was. Yeah. That, uh, Millie, Millie, I'd, I'd come across Millie through, both through Twitter and through that, that rather lovely uh, article in Doctor Who magazine. And Rory had been flicking through that one. He picks up my magazine every so often and goes, why is Colin in here? And why is Mummy in here? And why am I in here? Ooh, and just... Um, what have you got for me? Oh, thank you. What's this? Cups of tea. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. He's being extra nice. The second I leave or the second the camera goes off, he's going to be like, I want to play. Oh, hang on. He's going to pour his... his, pour his oh, cups I see. Of tea. It's nothing in there yet. Do you want to come and pour no, me you some made tea? Look ridiculous. I, I feel foolish now. How did I not know this was an imaginary empty cup of tea? Oh, thank you, my dear. Is this drinking water? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> Cheers, darling. It sometimes does get scooped. <laughs> I was making sure it wasn't a puddle. Thank you very much. Are you having a cup as well? <laughs> Like See, Luke there. Newman didn't oh, treat me this oh, nice. Oh. Thank you for watching my shoes as well. Oh, good. Hey, Rory, nice of you to join us. Oh, where's my sieve? You're wearing yours. There we go. Daleks United. One of the very few times that I'm not the one that looks ridiculous. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen that, haven't you, Rory? Who's that? Is that you? Me. We, we know cool. who has that now, don't we? Oh, who has it? My, my sister has that. My oh, sister, really? it turns out, lives about two miles from Millie in New Zealand. Utterly to our surprise, because I'd, I'd post up flippantly, going, oh, you, you've got all these different ones, and you know, where, where's, where's the Rory Dalek? And uh, she then crafted that, and the detail, and you can't, I, I think the, the photos... You like a cup, darling. I think are gorgeous. I want my own. Your own cup? You've got yours here, haven't you? Is this your one? Do Would you? you like a cup of tea? Mm -mm. There we go. <laughs> There's your cup of tea. That's very hot water. It is, you have to be very careful with hot water, don't you? You try it, have, take a sip. <laughs> How is it? Is it delicious? Yes. Can I have some squash? Some squash? Yes, you've got some squash here, haven't you? Thank you. You're very oh, welcome. Good manners. My lot don't know manners at the nursery. They're just like, give me food! But this no, was my also my favourite that I needed to bring up. <laughs> so what's the story there? <laughs> That's actually a screenshot from a, a Christmas video. Like a lot of families, we were hit by Covid. And uh, my Rory got it first. My wife got it and I got it. And oh, you all got it? Oh, yeah. It wasn't fun. But we're very lucky that we made a, a good, good recovery just before Christmas. And I thought, oh, I, I, mm. 
we'll we'll do a little video then um, for sort of friends and family of uh, him. So. I yeah, like your helmet. It's, it's yours is more accurate because it's the same colour as Colin, isn't it? Without the context of the Dalek costume, it does look like you're a chef. Going back to that that photo, that was Rory and I uh, one morning thinking, oh, we'll, we'll make a little pop video for uh, I want to spend my Christmas with a Dalek. <laughs> and then we realised that we couldn't actually get Colin out of the conservatory. Strategically, there's a shot in it for anyone who's watched the video, and it's on, on my Twitter feed somewhere um, down there, um, of him in the lounge. And that's only his top bit, his dome. <laughs> Perched on well, a behind the scene secrets. Perched on a pile of books. And then, of course, for, for uh, Rory, they went, oh, we, we should take him up to, our, up to the bedroom, Daddy. So I, 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 he, As one would say. So, so he, he did the filming of that little bit. So oh, really? I, if you had the version without the, the, the music on it, you just hear him giggling. He'd Hi, Rory. Giggling. Joining ah. us on the sofa. You want to be, remain anonymous, don't you? Also, we're all wearing sort of team colours with the jeans here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm glad you got the memo. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a dress code for the Dobson household. Absolutely. I keep forgetting what's behind me, and then I, like, turn and I see a plunger or a whisk, and I panic. I will ask, can I get in it? Of course. Yes! It is, it is a toy, not a screen accurate. <laughs> People do that, don't they? They just they keep it on a shelf oh, yeah, I mean, and they're like, can't touch that. To, to be fair, my Cyberman helmet is one of those, which is why we had to build his... Well, you do uh, have to unscrew own, to get in from own, what I've uh, seen. Yes, and it, it is hideously claustrophobic, the idea of just sort of having oh, the, yeah. the back screwed in. Also, you've got to trust your wife. And I do. Wholeheartedly, but there, there, there That's will a be, bold thing there, to start there, saying. There, 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 there will be moments where she'll just go, no, I'm going to leave him in there. To watch me live out my childhood dream of riding around in a Dalek, as well as more Dobson family banter, check out the video coming tomorrow. I've got a new washing machine, and it's great. But the pause button doesn't seem to be working, so I'm filming the art section first, as, well... No washing machines in here. Ian Branch has made this terrific Peter Capaldi drawing, and I mean, look at it, it is gorgeous. I'm looking at it on my phone now, the detail on display is absolutely incredible. And there's something about it being on black card too, it just adds such atmosphere to it that I, I, I love. If you want to see more of his work, go and check him out. Next is Alex Lime, or The Rebel of Time, with this Series 5 concept box art. Tempted though I may be, I have not been buying all of the Blu-ray box sets of the classic series. I only have McCoy's last one, but that's because me and Jem love McCoy's series. <laughs> one of the best of classic Who, if we're being honest. Bar ghost light. The one thing I can say all of them have in common are those excellent cover designs. But it obviously begs the question, if the new series got stuff like that, what would they look like? Well, Alex Lime, or The Rebel of Time, has answered that for one of my favourite New Who series, Series 5. Again, it, it, it's the little details. It's the fact that, you know, you've taken the body and the head from different pictures. You showed that off in, in a video, I do believe. Of course, the cracking times there. The Pandorica makes a nice sort of centrepiece to that. If I'm not mistaken, the sort of white light at the top right of the screen. Is that the TARDIS blowing up from the Big Bang? I could be wrong and I could be reading into it, but that's just my guess. Also, I love how you put season 31. Excellent work, Mr. Alex Lime. Hey guys, do you like the Daleks? I personally quite like the Daleks. Quite a lot, in fact. <laughs> well, I think Tim Hill likes the Daleks because look at this gorgeous Dalek collage of all of their episodes. Again, I'm looking at it now. The detail, and I, I, I love the cracked, uh, screen aesthetic, it allows to show off everything perfectly. All of the poses and moments are excellently chosen. I love the big finish nods as well with the, I believe it's the Dalek time controller. I see comic book nods. It's hard to pick a favourite part of it because it's just all excellent. When I saw this on Twitter, I knew I had to show it off because just look at it. It's so good! Excellent work, Mr. Hill. I love it, and I want it as a poster in my home. Or like wallpaper, just the entire wall. <laughs> Finally, I have made it no secret over the years that one of my favourite episodes of all time is Heaven Sent. It's been argued that it doesn't make any sense, Heaven Sense, if you will, but I don't care. The direction, Capaldi's acting, the creature, just the premise, it, it's just so... Good. It's something you'd expect from Big Finish, not so much the show itself. I think that makes sense. But putting feelings aside, Shay, or Shay0505 on Twitter has made this. The circular design, you know, obviously reminiscent of both the castle and the confession dial, it really helps give it 
this is Ed. My favourite detail though is what you've done with Capaldi's face. You've added the skull underneath and those brilliant red stripes makes it stand out. It's wonderfully morbid which complements the episode itself with its darker themes. Excellent art for an excellent episode. If you yourself are an artist or you know an artist you'd want to be featured, send them my way in the DMs and I would love to feature them in the next episode. Moving on. How are you feeling? Do you like the show? Are you tired of it? Never mind, I don't want to know. Are you finding it boring? Too fast, too slow. I'm asking but don't answer cause I don't want to know. Do I have your attention? Yes or no? I bet I'd guess the answer, but I don't want to know Am I all in the background? Are you on your phone? I'd ask you what you're watching, but I don't want to know Is there anyone out there? Or am I all alone? It wouldn't make a difference, still I don't want to know I thought it'd be over by now but I got a while to go I'd give away the ending But you don't want to know I was blown away by the shout-outs I got last episode. I mean, Chris Thompson shouted me out! That was so cool! Can't say I was expecting that in my emails. And wouldn't you know it, I've got a few more shout-outs in my inbox. So, here they are. Enjoy. This is a shout out to both Hugh Chaser and Mr. Tardis. Hugh Chaser for having resourceful cosplay videos and having and having pretty much fun audio dramas. And Mr. Tardis for having insightful videos and just bringing up interesting topics in the franchise, really. I'm not really one for doing videos and things like that, but here we go. As you may well know, I'm a portrait artist and I do a number of different portraits, including Doctor Who. You've probably seen a few, pieces, a few of my pieces of work online, and as such, I've been requested to actually put these ideas and portraits forward. So I hope you enjoy them, and take care. First and foremost, we have got Summer underscore Visual FX. He makes some of the greatest posters. I mean, look at this one he did for Dominic Greenwood Martin. Look at that. Summer VFX, he's amazing. He's great. Custom Who Sonics. This guy makes amazing Sonic screwdrivers. I know my good friend Jericho Kane. He bought a Sonic screwdriver from it. It is massive. He uses the, uh, the, the cores from the Personalize Your Own Sonic Screwdriver sets and the Transtemporal Sonic Screwdriver. So that's why you can't find them on eBay anymore. Gun Building. So, Gun Building is a British Lego fan, much like myself, except for the British part. He is a member of the LGBTQ and other letters that I can't remember right now. Party. He is amazing. He makes the most amazing Lego TARDISes. He also does really cool sketches of Sonic Screwdrivers and other really cool franchises like the Dark Crystal. He does a lot of Victorian Gothic style artwork. And he also does just a lot of other Lego creations. He just came out with a new fig barf called the Arthurverse, which I think is really cool. It's got nothing to do with Doctor Who. However, there is a character in here who has a tea kettle for a head, and I'm all for it. Anyways, that does it for my segment of of the video. Well, hi everyone, my name is Bo. Uh, you might know me from the pilot episode. I'm going to shout some people out from the Doctor Who art community. Uh, I'm already sorry if I don't like, if I mispronounce your name, so let's go. There's of course uh, Lofia, Lizzie, Lilliput, Falco, Vicky, Guy, Abel, Zuck, Tom, Joe, Blue Fruity, Avery B, Riz, Holly, Sophie, Isaac, Valentina, Michelle, Connor, Naomi, Lucy, Barbara, Charlie, Daigo, Luke, Rosie, and Torby. And I just want to th say already thank you. I'll, also, if you just haven't added to it yet, uh, I know it's going to be freaking amazing. And yeah, they are all amazing artists. Go check them out. Follow them. Uh, yeah. And thank you for this opportunity, Jack. Thank you to those who submitted, and if you want to be involved in the next episode, 
send away. You know the rules by now. One minute maximum clip. Shout out someone who's not yourself. Send the link or the file to this email down below and I will be sure to include it. And if you were featured in this episode or the last episode, you can submit again. I don't care how many times I put you in. It's the fun of it that counts. <laughs> So remember last episode I did the what if skit? Uh, well, I did that shot, of course, of Anthony Ainley's master going, Die, Doctor! Uh, and I thought, for a bit of a laugh, I'd upload it as its own video, just the raw green screen footage and say, Edit away! Die, Doctor! Die, Doctor! Ha 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 no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die! <laughs> doctor. Let it go. Die, Doctor! Type it die! Down. Thank you to those who made the silliness you just saw, and I'm hoping to do more stupid edit challenges like that in the future, so keep your eyes peeled. <laughs>
And wouldn't you know it, there ends another episode of The Community Show. Thank you to everyone for your continued support. Last episode did very well, crossing 700 views in a week. I mean, what? <laughs> That's the power of Doctor Who 2012, I guess. And again, a big thank you to those who have been buying stuff from the shop. And remember, the new bow design will only be available for the next two weeks, so if you want it, get it whilst you can. Oh, and of course, a massive thank you goes to the Dobson family for letting me come to your abode and interviewing you. It was an amazing time, and getting in that Dalek and riding around in it, one of the most joyous experiences of my life. And yes, I am evil for putting me getting in that Dalek in a separate video coming tomorrow. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in episode seven. You power-mad conspirator! Yeah.